I've been doing some research into all-wheel drive EVs. I've found the six least expensive, but which one is going to be a better deal for someone like me? It's a beautiful day out here at the park, and we figured this would be a good place for us to go and just uh, get this next video in. I've been looking into all-wheel drive EVs, and I came up with a way for me to compare uh, different models with each other. Um, this is based on certain things that I'm looking for in a car, and they may not be the things that you're looking for in a car but hopefully you can at least get an idea from the system that I use and you can make your own metrics based off of that. First thing that I want to talk about is the methodology on how I came up with my rankings. First, let me say that I'm very happy with my 2022 Chevy Bolt EV, but I've mentioned in a previous video that there are some things that I would like to have on a new EV if I ever went that way. One is it has to be all wheel drive. Two, it has to be able to tow. These are things that concern me. Everything else that I base my rankings on is a pocketbook issue. I don't have a huge income, so price is a big deal. So I'm gonna rank these EVs based on price. I'm going to rank them based on their range, their efficiency, their towing capacity, as well as their estimated depreciation. Since I'm budget conscious, I'm only looking at the six least expensive electric vehicles that are available in all wheel drive as of the time of this video in July of 2023. So first, let me explain how I came up with the information in each of these categories. For price, I looked up all of the vehicles on cars.com. This was very time consuming. I basically searched nationwide for electric vehicles in all wheel drive and filtered out cars as I found them, sorted price low to high until I found out which ones were the least expensive. So the information that I'm getting on pricing is based off of current listings in July of 2023 from cars.com. For range, I'm using the EPA estimate that the manufacturer has available. Uh, for efficiency, I've divided that range by the usable kilowatt hours in the battery pack to figure out an average efficiency of miles per kilowatt hour. I have multiplied those miles per kilowatt hour by the national average uh, for the cost of a kilowatt hour in electricity from energysage.com, which says 23 cents per kilowatt hour, to determine a cost per mile. And then I take a 1,000 mile per month uh, driving um, pattern or driving amount, since that's what most manufacturers use when they calculate their warranties is a thousand miles a month to figure out an estimated electricity cost per month to drive that vehicle. To figure the towing capacity, I looked at what the manufacturer says that the vehicle can tow. For depreciation and uh, used car value, I went back to cars.com and searched for a one-year-old version of the same car to see how much that car was selling for and what that price was in terms of a percentage based on the new car's MSRP. And the last category that I looked at is going to boil down to charging time. How long will a vehicle have to sit at a DC fast charger when you're out on a road trip? To calculate that, I came up with a hypothetical road trip that went from Six Flags over Texas in Arlington down to the Galveston Pier in Galveston, Texas, and then back to Six Flags over Texas in Arlington for a grand total of 615 miles. I used a better route planner to find out how many charges, how many charging stops each vehicle would have to make and used their estimates on how much time would be spent charging, and I'm going to call that charge time minutes. In each of these categories, I am ranking the cars on a six point must system. Since there are six cars, the car that wins the category gets six points, second place gets five, third place gets four, and so on, all the way down to the sixth place vehicle getting one point. Then I add up all those points and see which one has the overall highest total. So now let's get into the rankings of the six 
least expensive all-wheel drive EVs that I could find in July 2023. In sixth place of the least expensive all-wheel drive EVs is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. I found one that was a select trim level that had an MSRP of $51,590. However, the dealer was offering it at a discount at a price of $45,495. Currently, in July 2023, the Ford Mustang Mach-E qualifies for a partial EV tax credit of $3,750, bringing the net price down to $41,745. Of the six EVs on my list, it is dead last in terms of price. It is the most expensive one that I looked at based off of that net price. In terms of range, the Mustang Mach-E is rated for 250 miles. This one that I looked at, that was its listing, was 250 miles. Placing it in fifth place in terms of overall range. At that 250 miles of range, it has a 72 kilowatt battery, giving it an average efficiency of 3.47 miles per kilowatt hour, or off of my calculations, a charge cost per month of $66.24. In terms of efficiency, the Ford Mustang Mach-E ranked third overall in that category. In terms of towing, the Mustang Mach-E is not rated to tow at all in the United States. Across the pond in Europe, it's rated to tow uh, around 1,500 kilograms, which is about 3,000 pounds, but in the United States, it's not rated to tow and that can mess with your insurance, that can mess with warranty work and things like that. In terms of resale value, I found a used Mach-E for the cost of $35,584, which is 68.97% of its original MSRP, placing it in fourth in terms of resale value. Finally, on my hypothetical road trip, it would require two hours and 17 minutes of charge time using five total charge stops to make that 615 mile round trip, placing it in dead last in terms of time spent charging. So the Mustang Mach-E comes in in sixth. Coming in in fifth place is the Subaru Solterra Premium. The Subaru Solterra I found with a sticker price of $46,615, but I found a dealer willing to sell it for $41,021. The Subaru Solterra is not built or assembled in North America. It is not eligible for any of the new EV tax credits. So that $41,021, that's the price, placing it in fifth place in terms of overall price. In terms of range, the Subaru Solterra has a range of 222 miles based off of this listing, placing it in dead last in terms of range. Also has a 72 kilowatt hour battery giving it an average efficiency of 3.08 miles per kilowatt hour, placing it in dead last on efficiency. That translates to a, an estimated electricity cost per month to charge the Solterra over a thousand miles charging at home of $74.59. For towing, the Solterra can tow 2,000 pounds. It is rated to tow 2,000 pounds, which means it could handle a utility trailer, it could handle a tier box camper. That places it in fourth place overall for towing capacity. For resale value, this one's tricky and needs to have a little asterisk by it because the Solterra wasn't around in 2022. I was able to find a used 2023 Solterra for $36,888 which was 79.13% of MSRP, placing it in second overall in terms of resale value. But again, it's a current model year car, so that should have a little bit of an asterisk by it. And then finally, on the hypothetical road trip, according to a better route planner, it could handle that 615 mile road trip with five charge stops at a total of one hour 41 minutes spent charging, placing it in fourth place on uh, charging time minutes. 
In fourth place overall is the Volkswagen ID4 in the pro trim level. The ID4 that I found was an MSRP of $47,973, but this dealer was selling it for $45,973. The Volkswagen ID4, with, by virtue of being assembled in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and having the correct mineral requirements, is eligible for a $7,500. Uh, $7,500 federal tax credit provided that you have the tax liability to use that $7,500, bringing it down to a net price of $38,473, making it the least expensive all-wheel drive EV that I found. So it is first in terms of price. For range, however, the Volkswagen ID4 has 255 miles of range on an 82 kilowatt hour battery, giving it an average efficiency of 3.11 miles per kilowatt hour, which works out to an electricity cost per month of $73.96. That places the ID4 in fourth in terms of range and fifth in terms of efficiency. The ID4 is capable of towing 2,700 pounds, which places it in second in terms of towing capacity. For resale value, however, the used Volkswagen ID4 that I found had a price of $30,998, which was 64.62% of its MSRP, placing it in fifth in terms of resale value. Finally, for the hypothetical road trip, the ID4 can do it in three charging stops with a total of one hour and 54 minutes spent charging. In third place is the Hyundai Ioniq 5 in the SE trim level. I found a Hyundai with an MSRP of $50,655, but it was at a dealership that was discounting it by exactly $10,000 to $40,655, making the Ioniq 5 fourth in terms of price. As far as range goes, the Ioniq 5 had a range of 266 miles and has a 77 kilowatt hour battery, giving it an average efficiency of 3.45 miles per kilowatt hour, which translates to a monthly electricity cost of $66.58, placing it in, in third in, in terms of range and fourth in terms of efficiency. For towing, the Ionic 5 is rated to tow 2,300 pounds, placing it firmly in third place. In terms of resale value, however, I found an Ionic 5 that was one year old for $29,980, making it 59.18% of its MSRP, giving it dead last in terms of resale. Where the Ionic 5 can shine, however, is in charge time. It is capable of charging very quickly, and on my hypothetical road trip, the Ionic 5 would require four charge stops and would only be charging for 53 minutes. That places the Ionic 5 in second place in terms of time spent charging. In second place is the Tesla Model 3 Long Range. Every other car on this list is an SUV or a crossover, but the Model 3 is a sedan, which is why I have a top six instead of a top five. But I figured that the Model 3 was worth including. The Model 3 long range is all wheel drive and has a price of $47,240. While it's possible to maybe get a discount if you shop from current Tesla inventory, I could only filter uh, current inventory within 200 miles of where I lived, and there was no current inventory at that starting price of $47,240. So that comes out to being the best price. However, the Model 3, again, if you are able to get the full tax credit because of your tax liability, gets $7,500 of that tax credit and has a net cost of $39,740, placing it in second place in terms of price. The Model 3 Long Range has a stated range of 333 miles and has an 81 kilowatt hour 
usable battery, giving it an average efficiency of 4.11 miles per kilowatt hour or an estimated electricity cost per month of $55.95. Those figures placed the Model 3 in first place in terms of range and second place in terms of efficiency. However, the Model 3, like the Mustang Mach-E, is not rated to tow in the United States. In Europe, it's rated to tow 2,000 pounds, but in the United States where I live, it is not, so it gets zero points in terms of towing capacity. For resale value, I found a Model 3, and I had to double check to make sure that it wasn't a branded title, that was available for $32,887. Of the used cars that I looked up, this one was the highest mileage one, so maybe that could have an asterisk on it as well, but that is 69.61% of MSRP, placing it in third place overall in terms of resale value. The Model 3, however, could do my hypothetical road trip, making only three charging stops, being stopped charging for a grand total of 37 minutes, making it the fastest car in terms of time spent charging on that specific road trip. And in first place, with a, with a grand total of 27 points, a full six points ahead of second, is the Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive, which a lot of folks are just going to call the standard range Model Y. It has an MSRP of 47,740 as of the time of this video. But again, just like with the Model 3, I could not find within 200 miles any existing inventory at or below that price. So that MSRP is also the best price. Like the Model 3, it is eligible for the full $7,500 of the tax credit. Again, if you have the tax liability to be able to take advantage of that. That brings its net price down to $40,240, which places it third overall in terms of price. The Model Y all-wheel drive is rated to tow 3,500 pounds, which places it in first in terms of towing. For range, the Model Y all-wheel drive has 279 miles of stated range with a 67.6 kilowatt hour battery, giving it an average efficiency of 4.13 miles per kilowatt hour, making it the most energy efficient car on this list. That comes to an estimated electricity cost per month of $55.73, barely edging out the Model 3 long range. The big difference I'm going to guess is caused by the long range Model 3 having a heavier battery and carrying a little bit more weight. In terms of resale value, this was a clear winner. The least expensive Model Y I could find that was one year old, that wasn't a branded title, was $42,991, which was 90.05% of the MSRP. Now that new Model Y has a $7,500 tax credit and that used one could have a $4,000 tax credit. That puts the new car and the used car just a couple thousand dollars apart in terms of net. Finally, in terms of the hypothetical road trip, the Model Y could do it in four total charging stops, spending one hour and 23 minutes sitting on a charger, placing it in third. So in terms of my overall comparison categories, the Model Y placed first in three of them, second in one, and third in the remaining two, giving it the highest point total overall. Now those six categories are the categories that I would consider if I was shopping for the car for me. I'm not at the moment, but if I was, those are what I'd be looking for. You may have completely different pr uh, priorities and that's perfectly fine. I did not compare the level of equipment or luxury in some of these cars. I did not compare the user interface. I did not uh, compare the charging networks. It should be noted that of those six cars, at the time of the filming of this video, Volkswagen, Subaru, and Hyundai do not have an agreement with Tesla to be able to use the NACS plug. So they are currently CCS only. The Ford has an agreement to use the NACS plug beginning in 2024. It can't use it yet, but it should be able to use it soon. The two Teslas with the right adapter can charge it any public charging station, DC fast or level two that you can find. So you might wanna consider that as well. EV prices are always, 
always changing. I plan on updating this video about maybe once every quarter and just see how things are and how things move. Uh, and next week, if you guys like this kind of content, I'll have a video like this on two wheel drive EVs as well. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.